to us. Uh, could you tell us a bit about yourself and how has your journey been in, in this industry? Well, I'm from the steam age of games, really. <laughs> you have to go back a long, long way in history. I used to play uh, board games in the 1960s, believe it or not. <laughs> and I started my first games company in 1975, a company called Games Workshop, and launched Dungeons & Dragons in Europe. From that, I uh, introduced Warhammer and Sistel Miniatures, and uh, wrote interactive game books, books that look like normal books, but they're interactive in which the, the reader becomes <laughs> player and makes choices and lives and dies by the decisions, it's usually set in the world of monsters and magic. And that was really the birth of also video games because they were interactive books before technology came along. Um, I invested in a small British developer called Domark and Domark became Idos in 1995 when we took the new company to the London Stock Exchange and got funding and became a public company. Uh, the big break came, of course, in, in 96 when we created Tomb Raider. And uh, Tomb Raider and Laura Croft has been the, you know, the, the huge monumental success for Eidos. It's made it an international publisher that everybody knows. And so I've been very pleased to be part of that whole gaming scene for nearly 30 years. Do you see the Indian gaming industry? What potential do you think uh, is available to it? Well, clearly there's a huge market here for, uh, for content that's relevant to the Indian uh, market, but also there's a global market that people have to look at. It seems to me, uh, my experience with any games companies, that they're at really at the starting point in terms of creating their own content, but they're also a long way down the line in, in, in doing uh, work for companies who outsource art, animation, uh, graphic content to Indian companies to be put into Western games. But by doing this, by being a work for hire, they can acquire the skills to make their own intellectual property and then publish worldwide. So I say that uh, the, 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 the threshold of being a powerhouse in, in, in gaming, and gaming is just an amazing market that's growing. You know, $20 billion a year in software sales alone. It's all the online revenues, and multiple player games, massive multiplayer online games, casual portals, millions of devices, lots of content. Games are really the future of interactive entertainment. Okay, um, if you could tell us a little about the, the progress of Tomb Raider, where it started initially, where it has reached today. Okay. Well, I'm very happy to have been Laura Cross' father, my little baby. <laughs> for over 12 years now, since we published her in 1996. And she's gone from being, uh, obviously, a video games character to become a mass market entertainment property. Because Lara Croft has all those qualities that everybody likes. You know, she's strong, intelligent, independent, adventurous, she's sexy, all the things that men like. But guess what, those are all the things that women like too. So, men want to play with Lara Croft and women want to be Lara Croft. And because of the the, the, the brilliance of the games that made uh, Hollywood aware of such an amazing property that we licensed uh, two movies starring the wonderful Angelina Jolie, who I met on set at time with a couple of times, I'm kind of still recovering from that. And uh, but Angelina Jolie then made the whole world wake up and realize that Laura Croft is not just a game. In fact, some people think it's just a movie. Exactly. And they think the game came afterwards, but in fact the game certainly came first. So that's just the power of the intellectual property that you can create during games. And if people think about a career in games, they can think, wow, it's a very important and powerful industry. Um, gaming today is, is no more a child's play, it's a test of skill and mental abilities. Would yes. you agree? Well, I think it's a mixture of all those things. Games used to be played by men in their bedrooms, and the games were made by men. So they they were quite, quite niche in their content. But now as more people embrace games as a way of, of entertainment, the content diversity is expanding. So young and old are playing games, male and female games. The games have moved away from the bedroom into the living room, and people play games socially together. And being social is an innate human desire. You don't want to eat food on your own, you don't particularly want to go to the cinema on your own, you don't want to look at the best, wonderful sunset in the world on your own. You always want shared, shared experiences. And now games like you know, Nintendo's Wii have got people playing in the game in the living room together. So social gaming, online social gaming through multiplayer games, has become 
the, 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 the uh, entertainment of choice with, with today's modern game.